everybody. Welcome to the Earl versus Efren match here at Steinway Billiards. I'm Gail Glazebrook. Robles. <laughs> and Tony Robles. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we're excited to be doing commentary here for a little bit. We're going to be switching uh, commentators here, but we're, we're excited to have this great match going on here at Steinway Billiards. Uh, this is a battle of the legends, and for sure, they are two legends. I mean, uh, Gail's going to go over the, uh, the accomplishments of both players. Well, and they're about to get started. <laughs> Efren Reyes, the magician, as his nickname leads. He is a BCA Hall of Famer, three-time world champion, U.S. Open nine ball winner in 1994, Derby City all around, Derby City one pocket champion, Derby City nine ball champion. I could really go on and on, but I just, I, I, we don't have enough time this evening. And he is facing off against Earl the Pearl Strickland, BCA Hall of Famer as well, three-time world, world nine ball champion, five-time U.S. Open nine ball winner, and tons of other tournaments that he's won so it's going to be a great match this is the battle of the year and he must have pocketed a ball this is eight ball this is going to be the first of three matches that they play against one another I don't know if he's going to shoot the nine or go down there now to get rid of it I'd like to get rid of the balls in groups mm -hmm. and then you know instead of going up and down the table I would prefer to take the nine only because it's it's lower than the eight ball. Right. Everyone has a different style. Everyone has a different style of play when it comes to pattern play. I actually think he might have been going for the nine ball and didn't get the exact position he wanted and he changed his pattern. Hey, you hit it great. Well done, as long as he doesn't get tied oh, up on that ball. As long as he doesn't ball. end up, yeah. Almost wound up on top of Mount Everest there. I remember um, a couple of lessons that you gave me, uh, and you were talking about how those extra balls on the table from your opponent when you are running, breaking and running, they become more and more of a nuisance as you get down, down the pattern. And right. you do get yourself in a lot of trouble, and you can't just think about the position on the ball. You have to also think about not getting bad position on top of another ball from your opponent. This live stream match is brought to you by Inside Pool. We thank Alvin and the rest of the Inside Pool crew for always bringing us these live stream matches. They are, it's great for everybody around the country to be able to watch, around the world I guess if you really wanted to, be aiming a, being able to watch a match like this. You know, this is a tough table to break. I think, but honestly, I think you have better shot at making a ball, uh, playing eight ball because it's, there, there are more balls. Right. You know, in ten ball, he couldn't make a ball. He couldn't buy a ball on the break. This is a tough table to break on. <laughs> and you know, so anytime you make a, a, a ball on the break here, you know, it's, it's awesome. And you know, that what a great shot. Do you see any problems in this in this rack? No, not, none at all. As long as he ends up leaving one of the balls on the right-hand side for the eight ball to shoot it in the opposite pocket, assuming that the eight doesn't go by the two, then he should be fine. Yeah, so he's probably going to shoot this, shoot the 13, come off the rail, shoot the nine in the side, and have perf get per perfect shape on the eight. Oh, wow. Wow, I'm surprised he did yeah, that. Yeah, well, the ball ran a little long on him there. Oh, he doesn't even have to. Mm. Well, he hit it unbelievable. Dead in the center of the pocket. That is a home court advantage, I think, working in his favor.
the 6 or the 3 has access to the side pocket or if the 6-3 combination is dead in the upper right hand corner. So I guess we're about to find out. I guess he wants to play it in the side. So he might try to play position for the one in the corner or draw it straight back and shoot one of those in the side, right? It's the only other option that I see there. Mm. Yeah, you hit it great. He you did. hit it unbelievable. Wow, you had to hit that shot dead perfect. Mm -hmm. like Earl is going to take a three to nothing lead against Efren and Efren really hasn't even seen the table outside of Bregan. That's right. Well, I think that the, the, the player that pockets the most is the balls on the break is the one that's going to win. Unless you get a bad rack, the balls are going to spread pretty, pretty well, but you still have to pocket a ball on the break. Right. And See, look how, look how good he hit those, right? And, he's not and he still came out dry. Yeah. Tony, that's going to be the key to this match. So he needs to get rid of that three in the upper right hand pocket as soon as possible. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Well, he almost got in trouble there. Seriously. I'll tell you why he got away with that. I'm I'm really surprised he hit the ball that hard. He just has to make sure that he controls the one and that the one doesn't end up, you know, in front of the three. If he ends up coming off the one, two, three. No, he doesn't have to. See, because like I said, if he's can make the one in the side, he can use a one to get to the eight. When I first started playing full time on the Pro Tour, I used to watch Earl play, and I would watch every single one of his matches, every single one of Nick Varner's Buddy Hall and Mike Siegel's matches, and he's the only professional player I ever saw win a major tournament without missing a single open shot. That's amazing. A lot of people shoot into the side pocket hard as is, and he shoots like a thin shot like that with confidence. Yeah. Well, Earl just took a commanding 4 to nothing lead. Takes a commanding four to nothing lead, and Efren has yet to shoot a single open shot. We'd again like to thank some of our sponsors. First and foremost, we'd like to thank Steinway Billiards for hosting this event, as well as Inside Pool and NYC Grind for providing you this broadcast. We'd also like to thank London Bridges Promotion Productions and Promotions, <laughs> uh, Jeff Conway Company, uh, who has a lot of influence with a lot of the pros, trying to bring them into the area and have them play in, in these types of events. So we appreciate Jeff Conway also for what he's doing. So he's probably going to try to figure out a way to either run into that cluster or just slice a two down the rail because once he does that, oh wow, look, he missed a one ball on the side. And I think Earl is trying to navigate that 13-2 himself, trying to figure out how in the world he's gonna get out with that 13-2 and eight ball all tied up there. I don't know if he has an angle to run into the two. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, yeah. but we're about to find out. I thought it was Yep, steep. that's perfect. That's it. He should be out from here. That, that was the only problem ball. Fantastic shot. If he can, he might want to play position for the for the two as soon as possible. Ideal shot would be the one, seven, three, and then two. But he doesn't have a good angle on, on the one, so he has to shoot it. That's a good shot there, too, wow. breaking out the cluster. But now the nine stop or the 13 stop in front of the eight ball. Oh, you can see the entire ball. Oh. <laughs> what a great shot. Now, if you're after it at this point, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I better start making a ball on the break very soon. <laughs> I was talking to someone about this yesterday, and, and most of the time, it all comes down to who's pocketing balls on the break. If you pocket balls on the break, you're going to end up winning more games, obviously. Mm -hmm. 
He didn't hit the balls very hard. He took a lot off that break. But obviously worked. But see, look at this. That, see, that's that is not going to help his situation at all. Could be because he he's never played on this table before, and you know, like I said, Earl practices about five to eight hours a day in, in this table. So you know, that says a lot. Yeah. You know that that was what what a shot that was. Wow. See, that's why he's a magician. <laughs> <laughs> it's like like if he has a perfect angle here to end up coming off the rail and take that three out and have the winner's insurance, how strong would that shot be? <laughs> Yeah, he's breaking it wow. out with the eight ball. Oh. Look at that. Okay. That was a good effort. See, one, two, wow. and there you go. You, you are see? a magician. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> now he has to come off the rail a bit. Boom, and he's in there. Yep. Uh, he, he literally only had a very narrow room to get position for the eight ball to go down that corner. Yeah. He's such a great three cushion player though. He's, he's such a, yeah. Well, Effin finally gets on board. Look at how many people are watching this. That's, That's just one, one side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> there are three other sides of the room. Oh, let's see how Earl does. He, ooh, he almost made a yeah. ball on the break. He came up short there. Nothing. He's talking to himself already. Yeah, he, he wanted that 13 to go in too. <laughs> Yep, he can definitely make that one yeah. ball. If he can get the seven out of the way, that would be great. Run into the 12? Not even. He doesn't no. have to. That's perfect. Wow. Has and a slight awkward angle right here, but he should be fine. And that's a mistake I see a lot of people make. They're, instead of walking around the table and, and seeing the different perspectives, you might be surprised that you've got position on a shot that you didn't know until you actually walked around the table. I love that shot. That was a great shot. Because now he can get the ball, the four ball out of the way, and then it's easy, easy pickings from the two to the eight. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, well I want to come short. Oh, he's fine there. Yeah. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> they make it look so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, All right. Now it's 5-2. Now it's starting to get a little interesting. And I'd like to say hi to everyone in the chat room and always appreciate your comments. Uh, I actually get a kick out of some of the stuff that you guys write. It's fun to do this and uh, see everyone having a, a great time. Effort breaks on the odds. Oh, he made that corner ball. That corner ball flew straight in. Wow. <laughs> and I can hear Earl slightly in the background <laughs> talking. I've seen some that have short bridges that, that have great games as well. You know, um, I think it's more of a preference than anything. Um, I, I do believe that you have to work harder anytime that you choose to learn an unorthodox style. Mm -hmm. And if you have the time to play 8 to 12 hours a day, then you will master that style. Rodolfo Luar is a perfect example. He used to shoot sidearm, mm -hmm. and he was a former world champion. As a matter of fact, when he won the world championship, he beat Efren in the finals of that oh, yeah? tournament. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if he does have that angle, he has to be careful not to end up tying. He's not going to do that, though. He's not going to do that. I already saw that he's in the cue ball high. So, yeah, so he probably chose a pattern that I, I originally said. 3-1. Maybe even shoot the 1. and I don't know. It all depends on how you get me. He might play position for the 6 now. You see? Right? Play position for the 6 now. <laughs> shoot the 6. And then depending on the angle. I mean, you know how good you have to hit that ball to come in between the side pocket and the 14? I know. Just, you know, between the side pocket and, the, and the, that third diamond to get position on that six. And he still has to get good on the seven ball. Don't, I mean, it's no gimme in my opinion because he's got to yeah. get on the eight. Mm -hmm. That was one hell of a rack right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
And anybody that thought this was going to be a blowout when Earl took a 5 nothing lead, everybody said, no. Well, he made a ball. He can always shoot the five, the two, and then the three. Boom. Boom. Little friendly bump. Oh, look at that. He didn't get a friendly bump there at nope. all. But when it comes to playing ape on a nine-foot table or bigger... It is almost impossible to play safe. Yeah. And that's a perfect example. There really wasn't anywhere, m too many places where he could play a defensive shot. And, but every t now and then you had the exception. Right. The exception, he actually had an opportunity here to probably hit the three ball, go two rails, and bury the cue ball behind the five right. and the two. He didn't take advantage of that. Right. That's true. He became blinded by his, by his rage and wound up going for the crazy shot. And now Efren has the opportunity to come within one rack because of it. <laughs> See over here, he might even want to go rail first here, just to play position. He did. Right? Exactly what he did. And guess who breaks next? <laughs> Very interesting. Right? Now the score is 5 4. Earl after going up 5 0. Nothing. Nothing. And while Finning and Rexos Falls, we'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Inside Pool. TV and Inside Pool Mag for presenting this stream for us, as well as NYC Grind. Propool.com and London Bridge Promotions. It's a good chance Earl's going to get out from this one. I don't see anything wrong with this I mean, he spread He spread him well. Yeah. And it's like I said, when, when you spread him this well, it's, it's tough to, to, you know, to defend yourself, to, to get another turn at the table when you're playing with two, two legends like this. He's definitely taking his time with this rack. I'm used to Earl playing up with a little bit more speed. What is this? Speed. Yeah. I'm surprised he came short yeah. on this, this shot. I think he wanted to get straighter on the nine so he could shoot the nine. The one in the side and then the one by the rail and then use that one, you know, the, the one by where you break from mm -hmm. to get position on the eight, get position on the eight. Well, that's definitely not where he wanted to be. He should have no problems here though, but I, you're right. He was definitely a little out of position on that nine ball shot. Yeah. Yeah, because now instead of doing stop, slightly come off the rail and then just roll it down a bit, he's just going to have to work a little extra hard for it. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be fine. But he's definitely shooting more tentative than I'm. I mean, we get to, we're fortunate we get to see Earl play a lot because now that he's based in New York City, and he, he's definitely holding back on something. Hey, ball on the side. Okay, so now Earl takes the lead. Well, we already have the lead, but he goes ahead by the score of six games to four. And that ball's going to make it in the corner pocket. Well, I would say I, I don't see any problems here either. Four, one, three, seven, and then draw back for the six, two. It's, it's tricky because, you know, you have to remember one time they played a challenge match for a lot of money in Hong Kong. And he was ahead by 17 games towards the end. Just Ooh. need a couple of games, uh, uh, Earl. Earl. And Efren came back and beat him. 
Really? And you know, I you never know if that's always it still sticks in the back of his mind. Really? See, he tried to come back there to end up with position on the seven. He overhit it. I mean, he overdrew the ball. Mm -hmm. He ran into the seven. Ooh, look at this. He's gonna. He might. I don't know if he can slow it down. If he can, he might have to go up and down. Unless he wants to run into the 12 ball. Oh, he's going to go with inside spin. Wow, he hit that shot really good. He did. He shot that really well. And he got a perfect hand on the three to mm -hmm. get position on the eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he got that. That was one hell of a shot right there. Great shot. Really great shot. But see, that's what happens when you are a master of the table. You're a master of the table, you can shoot. It's like you're a GPS navigational system. You know every single route. There's if there's construction going on, you have the alternate route. You know the detour. It's like if he, he had the alternate route going there. You know? Well, let's see what Efren does here with the break. See if that three ball goes straight in the corner like he did earlier. Yep. You see? <laughs> it's unbelievable. You, think that's you know how tough it is to do that? Five in front of the pocket, the seven in front of the pocket. So, you know, it, ma it makes you give the six and the two go in the corner, the lower left-hand corner. He he's good here. I think Efren heard you, and he agreed. <laughs> <laughs> somehow get position on the one so you can use the seven to get to one of those balls there. If not, then he's going to have no choice but to shoot the seven next. Wow. Yep. Wow. He hit that great. He's in good shape here. Because now if he shoots that ball, gets position on the one, then come down for the two, shoot a stop shot on the two, and then the eight ball on the side. Very well played. I've learned so many things from this match already. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I just, I mean, pattern play. I mean, it, running into the balls. I mean, I, you know, I play a lot of nine ball, and so I feel like you're ton you're constantly trying to avoid running into balls. But in eight ball, it, it's such a critical component of being able to break out clusters, and and to help control the cue ball. Yeah, that, yeah, it's very true too. And it's just a lot of good lessons, particularly I feel like in this match, in, in nudging balls and. and helping yourself get get out all right yeah good point so earl says he's gonna try efren's break he's gonna see if that seven That's ball will fly into the corner but not, wow, not even, even close close <laughs> not even close can also sh shoot it with follow. He has, he's has, he has options here. He has options here. So you have to be careful not to get tied up with a 13 over here. You go four to go around the 13? Or is he still coming out? I like going three rails on this shot. You yeah. know, I like going three rails because if you leave it past the side pipe, once you get past that point, if you can't yeah. make the 13, you can shoot the 12. Plus, if you get the 11, which he has now, now he's going to end up between the three and the five. Mm -hmm and use it, the, the ball that's on left on the rail, the 12 ball, to get on the 13. I mean, these guys are just moving around this table so well. I mean, even like narrow corridors, they're still able to get the right position. Ooh, look at that. Except for that. Wow. I see what you're saying. Just because he got out of line, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that I, I know what you're saying. He left. He left the word. Look at this. Look how good wow. he hit that bank. Wow. <laughs> and look how perfect he got on the eight ball. That's unbelievable. How do you like it? He said, "I'm not giving up this table." <laughs> See if the two ball goes in. Oh, Boom, straight in. Gonna <laughs> He's going to go drive him nuts. He's going to go bananas. <laughs> yeah, and I don't see any issues in this rack at all. And I know Earl is festering over there in his chair. And this is the part where Earl, I mean, I, I don't know. If, if I was his girlfriend, I'd be telling him to take a break, step away from the table, calm yourself down. Because 
you know, he's frustrated. He's thinking that the break's working against him when the reality is he has the answers. I mean, you can watch what Efren's doing and try to mimic it as close as possible. And I don't think he's even going for the second ball if that's what Efren's doing. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to you have to play smart and play to whatever it is that is working for your opponent. If it's working for your opponent, why not give it a shot? Yep. You know, look for all the uh, possibilities for your advantage, even if that comes from your opponent. Yeah, and I know someone in the in the chat room is asking, are these double shim pockets? No, they're not. No, they are not. This is a ten foot table, but normal pockets. And I tell you, the house is going to come down if Efren ties this match seven apiece. You're welcome. And he used all of the pocket on that shot. <laughs> That was five nothing earlier. You're about to see a tie game. How incredible is this <laughs> match, huh? A true battle of the legends. <laughs> now the score is tied up at seven apiece after Earl was up five nothing in the beginning of the match. Wow, what a match we got going on here. And we have this match because of our lovely sponsors. We have Inside Pool, NYC Grind, Skyway Billiard, London Bridge Promotions. CNGGas.com, ProPool.com, Kamui, and the Bank Shot Calculator. And let's see if he goes for that second ball, and he does it. Oh, see, yeah, that one the well. that he's shooting that ball, but that's why. That was really, really well shot. Takes the lead again by the score of eight to seven. We got action here, Stanley Bitters tonight. <laughs> no. Of course, when I'm paying attention, he doesn't make that ball on the break. And uh, I see Gail that this is a match in eight in uh, eight ball, which is difficult to make balls on the break, and that's really what it's all about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. And it's good to see Ephraim at uh, 60 years old still still got his eye in and playing well. They're playing fantastic. I'm learning so much watching this match. I, I've just seen such an elegant way of, of getting out of a rack. Yeah, difficult racks. I a mean, like of one of them Ephraim had where it was all the balls were down in a line down the middle of the <laughs> yeah. table. And it was like, how's he going to do this? And, uh, of course, that's why he's called the magician. That's right. Because that's how he gets out of it, you know. <laughs> Wow. Uh oh. Wow. Now you're not going to see a happy camper here. That's the second miss for him of the match. And I don't think Efren expected to get back to the table. He will happily. He's played some beautiful soft uh, banks to, you know, to like just enough speed yeah. to get perfect positions, just like beautiful, you know. They float in. Very elegant. And 
we have our first safe of the match. Yeah, first safe. So he's going for the six. Probably going to maybe run forward and try and hide it behind the eight. Uh, oh, he's not going to like that. Yeah, no, he isn't. I think he might have been thinking to put it behind the eight or maybe the six was going to cover that stripe as well. Yeah. Oh, no, he wasn't here for the straight pull this year. It was the year before. And uh, he picked it up last night. I brought him in early to play on the 10-foot to just get his eye in. And I was amazed that after just a few shots, it was as if he it was a, it was a nine-foot table. You know? <laughs> we are playing call shot, call safety. So even though Efren did pocket a stripe on that shot, he does not get to stay at the table. Wow. Now he's still got that problem uh, pair of balls. Yep. He was hoping to have that. And if he wants to throw it to the four ball to the left, or nearer to where he is, He's that's not the, the position, there's the wrong side of it. Oh, the four. Oh, 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 oh. oh wow, wow, great shot. Great and shot. We've been seeing these kinds of shots the entire night. Like, you, you look at, everybody looks at the table and like, what he's going to do here? And yeah, then all of a sudden, he just throws out this shot that yeah. nobody expected. And he's, in. And he's early, he's pretty quick as well. He does, he's, he's played all these shots a million times before. Takes him a second to look at it. Yeah, he needs a two-second shot clock. <laughs> Very well done, Earl. Now that ball, I've, I've been seeing a ball go into that top left corner pocket for Earl a number of times. Ephraim's comeback has been halted a little bit. Nine ball 207 champion from England when I used to look after him years ago and uh, whoops well that was an unusual miss there I said how quickly do you know which set of balls you're gonna you know one gonna stay go to the table after the other guy's broken maybe in the way they play eight ball mm -hmm. I was just saying about Daryl Peach told me that within a split second and he's a great eight ball player, great eight ball player. So is uh, Jason Shaw is also a great eight ball player. Ephraim taking a little time over this uh, shot selection. I'm happy they're getting a little bit more defensive. Yeah. I feel like he could use the six ball to break it out. Well, or just that, break and it out. Oh, and wow. all, that was, oh, and that actually, oh, that yeah. goes in that pocket, I believe. Here sometimes at the bar in Steinway, and I wish I had a tape recorder with me because he tells stories and then he gives his little giggle. And <laughs> you know, <it's laughs> I love listening to him talk. I, I do too. He really, I mean, obviously, he's got an assortment of stories and he's, from his and pool he, career, but uh, he's just so great. And to he basically to. Oh, he lives and dies pool. Yeah. That's you know, I, I've listened to him. Oh, oh. now he's not going to be happy about that. Cut this in and run down for the th third uh, eleven ball, probably. Well, with Steinway's full bar here, some people may try to shoot ball on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last time we probably did commentary together was Comet Billiards, which. Oh my goodness. Which doesn't even exist anymore. Breaks my No, I think we've done some somewhere else. I think at the US Open, I think. Have you, have you ever no, been? No, I don't think so. I don't know if I did come no. there. Expo, maybe. Uh, no, um, Racks. I think we've done something at Racks within the last couple of years. Maybe. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. Well, Efren definitely took the opportunity that Earl presented there. And yeah. I mean, Earl was in a really tough position. He had those two balls tied up the whole... I think the whole round. Oh, yeah. They're going to go on a little bit of a break. See you guys later. Keep watching. All right, let's keep it down to resume play. Let's keep it down. And the match. Once again, no video allowed. No video from your camera allowed. So Efren came no back and beat and Earl. He came back and he came back from 100 down to 120. And Earl went from 112 to 117. And so, in a way, this is a different format, different disciplines, but I'm sure Ephraim wants to stamp his authority on this match, or matches, and uh, wants to come out the winner. So we'll see what happens. But right now, it's a close match. 
nine seven, uh, nine eight, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see what happens. It's all about the break. I'll put up a hundred thousand to see who's the best <laughs> player. That's the... that four ball so everything should be golden right now yeah and Earl, Earl always wears contraptions <laughs> I feel like yeah, he he's, a, he's a mishmash of uh, <laughs> designer wear. he doesn't accessorize the same way I do <laughs> no and he'll, dis he'll, he'll discard it in just as quick a manner as he puts it on. <laughs> well, I remember but one Super Billiards Expo, he asked, as serious as, as can be, he asked if he could wear a football helmet. <laughs> and they obviously said well, no. Well, there was a guy, and I'm sure there's a lot of you players out there and fans. It's got to be about eight years ago at least, but there was a guy showed up and wore swimming goggles to play in. And he played Mika and everybody was laughing like thinking this guy's a total retard. <laughs> and he had Mika four zip. He oh ran gosh. four racks on Mika and Mika's sitting there going, what? I could imagine he was thinking what the hell I'm getting beaten by a guy in swimming goggles. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a classic. And they let him wear them. They, they said he's, he's obviously a bit of a character, this guy. Thank uh, you, Tony. Uh, and we've got a ball on the break. You are watching a live stream match brought to you by Inside Pool and NYC Grind here at Steinway Billiards, and it's the Battle of Legends. Earl the Pearl Strickland versus Efren the Magician Reyes. Yeah, and these, the Finnegan, the uh, referee, you know, outlined their achievements at the beginning, but it, it, there isn't time to outline their achievements. Uh, Earl will be 53 in August, I believe, uh, August. And he started playing sort of really top class at like 14. Their drivers drive them around over there. They pull up at a red light and they wind the window down and they go, Oh, Django, Django. <laughs> and he goes, he doesn't wait at a red light. He just goes. That's amazing. Yeah. So I changed different. my name to Django. I don't know <laughs> He's putting on his I'm, I am one of the main shows in this exhibition. Shoulders on. hopes that catches a little bit more legs. This is going to be a three-day event. Right. We're playing eight ball now, and then you're going to see nine ball tomorrow night uh, and ten ball on and Thursday. they have their favorites for certain disciplines, right? Exactly. And I think most people were putting Efren as the favorite in this game. Efren was over the hill. I sort of got that theme. Oh, okay. And uh, I can tell you now, there's, you've <laughs> seen him play tonight, and you know, there's no way he's over the hill. The guy is still, he's got it. Plays phenomenal pool. I always hear people say that about pool players, and I, I, I don't really understand. Well, there's times when he doesn't play that much. You know, he's like he's if he's stuck in the. That Philippines. doesn't mean you're overhill. That means you're out of stroke. Oh, that's right. No, exactly. <laughs> so that's I think that's what they think. They because he's not playing, he can't play oh. anymore. You know, it's not the case at all. I don't think pool has an over the hill feature outside of like you know going completely blind. Well, well these guys have such a natural talent that. Uh, yeah. And he did have eye problems, cataract and stuff, and he had all that fixed, so there was a little period there where he went off the boil a little, but he's splitting, splitting these pockets pretty good. Don't see too much coming off the rail. But he's got to get going here because it's a race to 17. 
we decided on 17 really just because we thought it would take too long to too play long. 21 and it's not it's probably not working out that way or what is the time uh, just after 10 o'clock yeah. east coast time here great fit and that really that was it it was just a good fit and it came from there we just decided well let's do it three different formats make it different than you know I didn't want to do a, a race to 120 and copy it exactly so we just went for something a little different and show off their prowess in all, all the disciplines and oh he wanted that 14 ball to go in I had trouble getting him away from a chess game to start this match <laughs> He's probably playing for 10 bucks, but it was so important to him that he <laughs> drilled this guy out of $10. It's amazing. It's well, fine. everybody, all pool players tell you we're in the wrong sport. I said, did you win? He goes, yeah, I won $30. And I'm like, oh, that's raving over $30. He was playing at the US Open a few years ago, still in the tournament, still plodding along. And he got a phone call from an Arab prince in, the, uh, in Dubai. And he said, Ephraim, I'd like you to come out uh, for about a week and a half. Uh, come to my palace, play with my friends, and I'll give you 40,000. <laughs> Ephraim walked from the table, put his stick away, went straight to the airport, <laughs> went to, <laughs> and went to Dubai. That's that's how much money there is in pool. Wow. So, Barry Berman but lost... But note it wasn't Barry, a tournament. <laughs> Barry Berman lost him that year. <laughs> and flown out there first class. So, it's like, it's pretty... Yes. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, he's still plodding along here. Amazing. That 14 ball goes in the pocket, but, you know, Earl stays to mm -hmm. the table. That's so frustrating when, you, you you know, you're just just a little bit more, and he would have had that 14 in the pocket. And instead, it's going to be an even closer race. Wow. Now we have 11 to... Oh no, he's, oh, he's he trying was to help. telling him <laughs> Yeah, I know, he's probably trying to tell him how to screw up the rack then. <laughs> see, let's see what Evan does with this. Uh, he hit the head ball and he's not making that corner. He The fir the corner ball was flying into the pocket earlier. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh. Uh, he's got to shoot stripes here. And they're wide open. Got to be careful here. No, he's going to have to shoot that 12 yeah, ball down. Have to play this down. See if he makes this. Wow. Wow. Yeah, he made it, and he's got the. Uh, he's trying. He's trying. Uh, this is okay because he can still do the breakout yeah, shot well. here. See how he's getting the angle to break that out? Yeah. Now this breakout works for him. Well Good done. Shot. Well played. And I I mean, to give both of these guys an enormous amount of credit, they can even when they've gotten themselves in trouble, they're so amazing at their craft that yeah. they, they're they able to get out anyways. And not only do they get out, they get back on track yeah. so quick. As Ginky used to say, B-I-L, back in line. Right. <laughs> That's okay. He's you know, not laying himself down. It's, if the score was 17-3, then people are going to say things, you know. Gonna go to the right of that ball. That's it. There. Yeah, you better hope that doesn't. Oh, oh! But he missed that ball. Yeah, but I think he saved him. I'm not sure. Can no, he, get he can shoot that 12 ball. I always love. You sacrifice shot to get position on a ball. You don't get to shoot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well played. Well, the bottom of the table, so. He hit that too soft. He hit mm. that too soft. Well yeah, done. Yep. Great shot. Very good shot. Great shot. Very, very good Just shot. Took, he took it off the cushion, but he knew it was still going to go in. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. In Filipino as well. <laughs> 
Two. Oh, whoa, two. Whoa, whoa. two. Wow. 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 And wow. 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 Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, that was a great shot. Wow. I wonder if they're if they're intentionally getting poor positions so that they can have fun making these awesome shots. Oh, are you kidding oh, me? No. God, you're one lucky guy every year. Little seven, round of seven. I think he's playing safety. <gasps> Get out of here! Wow! Did that? I did. Yeah, it went by. It. Well, it's difficult to see. It on the monitor, but to be honest, it didn't look like it, it went, and he made it, and now he's got a long shot on the eight. And if he misses this, there's a stick going. Uh-oh. You're a lucky guy again, Ephraim. And now Bada's going to make sure he plays a much better safety than he just did. Now, this would be a great shot if he makes this to bring the house <laughs> down because he's going to come off the bottom cushion, <laughs> hit the right-hand side as we're looking at the monitor, and cut it in the side pocket. And if this goes, woo. Uh, and the, don't count it out because <laughs> no, it's quite... Don't. But this is called shot call safety, correct? Yeah. So if, if Earl does call this eight ball and doesn't... <gasps> oh, my God, you called it! Oh, my gosh! Oh my gosh! Wow. Oh my goodness. Now this, I would think that would fuel and Efren. And he didn't have much options because he had to call it somewhere and he just called it there. It's amazing. <laughs> you know. I wouldn't count out Efren just yet. I mean, outside of the alternate break, allowing Earl to get back to the table, I think that the crowd cheering in that shot would put a, a little bit of a fire under Efren and say, no, no, no. no. That was a weird break because uh, they're still there from the cluster of the rack. Mm -hmm. Not even moved. Look. Yeah. No, it was a, it was a, the rack didn't break well at all. Oh, wow. That was a great shot. What a fantastic shot. Just put enough draw on that to just get it to what roll that half a ball shot. forward. That way he could shoot that eight ball in that pocket. And I was wow. I was just going to say, you know, it would be great if he could shoot the eight ball now because he's in the perfect position to do that. So he made that happen. Well played. I would say Efren's had a good enough amount of experience playing players like Earl. Oof. Now that is not attractive. Plus, doesn't it make it seem like it was that much more amazing if you had to, <laughs> you well, know? I'm still, I'm still. Uh <gasps> oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> well, that's why he's called the magician. Oh my! I was telling someone today. I don't know whether you, you guys at home and on the uh, chat room, if you go on YouTube and put Ephraim Reyes 30 ball run uh, or two, two, two two sets of balls but just put anything you like in and you'll find it he tipped it's dvd he did it twice he put two racks of balls on the center of the table in a circle uh -huh. not random just tipped them out the tipped them out the tray ran them out one one two two three three four four five really? five six six uh, in a cluster about two foot like 30 balls in a cluster so chicago of square six <laughs> yeah, right. And then he and then he put another two two sets of balls on the table and ran those out. Wow. And and the right English to hold it or you know to accelerate it, whatever. It's just amazing. They're both good like that. Though. You know what? If he wins to... No, you're kidding me. No. I should never have said that. I jinxed him. And he smiles. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and Earl will happily, happily run this rack out. Okay. 
Look at all those people in the background. My goodness. Oh, it's packed. It's packed. There's about 300 people around the table. Great shot. They do love those shots down the cushion. Definitely. Well, this this one's all over. We'll yeah. put this in the record books. And Earl is only three away from winning this first night. This will be an eight ball. Pretty exciting. Pretty some great shots. And while I have this short opportunity, I'd like to take a moment to thank Pro Pool Ron Hoffman. Special thanks to them from Inside Pool and the rest of us viewing the stream. Check out the virtual tournament director. It is available to your pool room. Players can play tournament matches anytime they want and visit ProPool.com for details. We're here at Steinway Billiards in Astoria, Queens in New York City. I'm Gail Glazebrook Robles commentating with Jeff Conway and you're watching the Battle of Legends, Earl the Pearl Strickland versus Efren the Magician Reyes. They just don't miss these uh, straight shots. Never miss them. Rack here would be a deciding, a defining moment to have him get to 15. Keep an effort at 11. Earl's nearly at the winning post here, so he doesn't want to screw up. sorted a little mess out. I'm just saying to the uh, people watching that uh, Earl looks like he's almost down the winning stretch here, the winning furlong. But you never know. It's never over till it's over, you know. Yeah, what an exciting match. I mean, Steinway Billiards is just absolutely packed. I've never seen packed. it so. There's about 300 people standing around the room, standing room only, and nobody's leaving. Yeah, and there's been some phenomenal shots. Phenomenal. I don't know, did you see that shot when he pulled the eight ball? Carol's incredible, so is Efren. These guys, I mean, this match is... Yeah, it's 15 to 11. All right, Earl's winding up. Look at this. And he had Finnegan tap Look the front ball down, so let's see what happens here. This is almost for the win. He only needs two more games. Six and no. Up, up. Right. Nothing. to move that 15 at some point, I believe. He doesn't play as much as he used oh, to. Oh, don't give me that stuff. No, he, no, he plays in the Philippines. He plays every day. <laughs> he, he plays the pool every second of every so day. I'm going to follow this and see if he can nudge that seven down the table a little bit. Like that. Oh, that's a pretty shot. Just, he moved that 15 out there. That's such a good shot. That oh, way. yeah. But he's got to make it happen here because... Uh, yeah, here's where the bridge comes in handy, but he's okay. You've got two of the greatest players, and not not two, the two greatest players in the world. They don't want to use their. Oh, see him stand up on the ball. Look Man, at that's that. just not good. There he is, Earl Strickland, the Pearl. Man, you come here to see here in the real world, inside Pool TV in Astoria, New York City. Little piece of history here, the Battle of Legends. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, he's getting so close to the finish line now, he can almost smell the tape. Will he trip in the last furlong? We'll see. He's got the full arm weight on tonight, folks. That's yeah. to keep him down on the shot. And they're heavy. Mm -hmm. He left them in the pool room went out and I had to run out and give them to him because he left them behind in Brooklyn last year or year before and uh, geez they're like they weigh about three or four pounds each these things three strokes every time one two hit Earl Pearl Strickland what an incredible talent 
superhuman determination. That's what yeah. these two gentlemen have displayed. This is the greatest uh, two pool players that ever lived, that are living right now. Okay, there you go, folks. You're getting your money's worth tonight. So he only needs one more game. To the Hill. On the Hill. For $3,000. There is no money in pool. Yes. But not for the players nor promoters or anything. But uh, spent all this money for a great event, Jeff, and I really appreciate it. Well, sir. when they played in Hong Kong, the guy who put that event on put up a hundred thousand for a similar reason. He just wanted to see who the best two players were in the world and said, "Well, I'll put up a hundred thousand." And I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Mark Wilson if you're listening. You did the commentary on that Hong Kong match and. Uh, you, you did it great then, and you're even greater now as you, when you do commentary. Great fan of yours. Well, let's see if he can run these out and get a little confidence going here. He needs a seven, a six-pack. This is like playing pool in a fine rep. Wow. Well, I don't know why he hit that so hard. He had a plan, I'm sure. Trust, trust that you know how to make the shot. What a great shot it all played there. So if he follows this down, he can play that same pocket. Oh, he's playing that down there. That's a great shot. Oh, man. Wow. Earl's awesome. Let's see. He's going to draw this for sure. Go with your guy. Like that. No, he didn't want I don't think he wanted that. He can make it uptown, I guess. Let's have a look here. I guess there's enough room because he wouldn't take it if he thought he was scratching, so. So it looks like the score is going to be 17-11. Wow. Oh, watch Earl go right in the pocket here. Oh, he got so lucky. So lucky. But he's on the cushion a little bit here, but I still think he'll make this. And yeah, that should be no problem. You have your winner, folks. There he is, the, the Pearl. 17 to 11. Great match. Wow. Awesome. Well, thank you guys awesome. for tuning in, and uh, hopefully you bought the three, three night package. And we'll see all you same guys tomorrow night and the next night. Thanks a lot, this Jeff. Is, uh, I'll say cheerio from Jeff Conway. And uh, I'll say cheerio from Alvin. Thank you very much for setting it all up, Alvin. You're very welcome, sir. Thanks for having okay. me here. See you tomorrow, guys. It's been great uh, planning this out and making it happen with you.